Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Director of the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. And today we have a nice job on this beautiful art glass table lamp. Now there's no maker's mark or any kind of identification on this, but from the style, I believe it is from the area of the world called the Czech Republic, or whatever it was called back then. It was originally known as the area of Bohemia, which is famous for Bohemian crystal. The way this piece was made was blue and green glass were mixed together, but not uh, enough to become one solid color. It's picked up and blown out into this shape. Then, while it's still hot, this blue and white glass is drizzled over, obviously, as you're turning it. And uh, then they take it and they rub it down into the hot glass. At this point, both of them would be nearly red hot. And then as it cooled, working it into this shape like this. Now, this area of uh, the world called Bohemia was one of the earliest to figure out a way to make clear glass because sand, when you melt it down and make glass, contains all kinds of minerals which affect the color. So, and usually the color was kind of a, a muddy brown. It wasn't very attractive. But uh, they figured out chemicals that could be added to the molten glass, which would bond with the minerals, and they could scoop it off the top, and uh, end up with crystal clear glass. Of course, crystal clear glass probably got boring after a while. And uh, they started looking at the colored glass again. And depending on what minerals you add to it, you get incredibly beautiful colors like this. So the green, the blue, and the white all add up to go in what we call art glass today. Today we're going to put in a new cord, a new socket, and the customer has requested a uh, cord switch to be put about a foot away from the base of the lamp. First thing we do is get the old stuff off of it. And fortunately for me, this neck is threaded onto the pipe that goes through the center of the lamp. I don't have to take this apart to do this job, which uh, relieves me of one of the worries, because I would really hate to drop this, knock it over, or something like that. Now, usually on a lamp this short, you can just simply push the cord up through from the bottom. But with this neck right like this, I know that there's actually a gap between the long pipe, and this is just a little short nipple sticking out. And that will make it snag as you're going up. This is a piece of uh, basically the kind of tubing you use in aquariums. Sometimes I use surgical tubing, a little more expensive. Then I stick the wires in here. And I can push from this end. And that hose will guide it right past And the hose will guide it right past that gap between the pipes. To reassemble it, I start with the uh, blue thread lock. This is the generic Harbor Freight version of it, but it works the same. It's the kind of international convention on the color of thread lock compounds. Where the blue is the kind you could take loose with regular pliers or wrench or something. And red is the kind that you have to heat up with a torch to get it loose. 
Sometimes I do use the red, but not often. Next up, the heart. Have a dash of dreadlock just to make sure I got some on there. And I like to lock the heart down with a nut. And that's mainly so that when I uh, put the socket on her, I can adjust the socket to any position I want without having to worry about whether it's pointed to the front or not. So I'm going to use this starburst right here. Yeah, I think that one's prettier as my front. Now on this kind of lamp, which uh, the cord comes out any way you want it to, front and back sometimes aren't quite as critical. But again, that's what you got to think about ahead of time or you're going to end up doing it over again. Now, the kind of socket I use here, I buy from uh, Graham Brass, one of the more popular online lamp sources. I'll screw this little lock screw down. And you notice a notch here in the back. That tells me the back of the socket for sure, because there's a little dimple in the uh, shell where it goes. And this is the part where I talk about the underwriter's knot, underwriter's loop. Very critical part of any kind of lamp repair. This lamp had one. But this little pretzel, not like this, is actually a safety feature. Because what could happen if you're walking through a room with the lights turned off and your foot catches on a lamp cord, it could yank it hard enough to pull it out from underneath these uh, terminal screws. And when that happens, you've got two live wires down inside a steel pipe and someone bends over to pick up the lamp, they get shocked or electrocuted or, you know, it's not a pleasant situation, whatever. So that's your first step. The second safety feature, and if you notice on the uh, socket, we have a brass colored screw and a silver screw. And on the cord, one side is smooth and one side is a ridge. You can feel it with your finger. The smooth side is always put under the brass screw. And you want it to be down nice and tight like that. The ridge side is always under the silver screw. Now, one thing you will notice is the tips of these wires have a little bit of solder on them. That's called tinning. And that makes all those little tiny strands of fine wires into one single wire so that when the, you tighten the screw down on them, they don't splay out and pop out. Now, purpose of the different wires and the different colored screws is pretty simple. This brass wire is what they call the hot wire. Just a name. Both of them are as hot as the other. All right? But it goes through the switch and then goes to the terminal in the middle, which the uh, base of the light bulb touches. The silver uh, screw goes to the shell. Now, what this means is, is that if you walk into a dark room and you find a lamp that doesn't have a bulb in it, if you reach up in here to try and turn the switch, but you turn, touch the socket by mistake, nothing happens. Because the power has to come through the smooth wire through the switch first. To get shocked, you'd have to stick your finger all the way down in there, and the switch has to be on at the same time. If you were to wire this backwards, Anytime somebody came in, wouldn't matter whether the switch was on or off, they're going to touch the shell and get shocked. So we can't have that. I 
I prefer this kind of socket with the screw on ring because once it's together, it's nice and solid. You don't have to worry about a customer bringing in a lamp with uh, it hanging out like this one. Now these switches can be a bit of a pain to install, but they're really pretty simple. On the inside here, you've got this pair of little brass spikes. And I like to take a single edge razor blade and spread them apart slightly. Not too much. Now, the switch is installed with the spikes on the smooth side. And with my lamp unplugged, please remember that. Cut through the smooth side, chop out a little short piece. Now the back shell has a space for the ridged wire to go through. Press it down flat like that. And the switch side goes down get it nice and flat like this and those two little barbs pierce the wire and the switch jumps between the two of them when you turn it on and any problem you have with this is going to be because one of those little points didn't go all the way through Plug it in and give it a try. There we go. Now you just press it together nice and tight. Hope those little spikes go through the wires like they're supposed to. Screw it down and make sure it's nice and straight all the way around. Plug it in and give it a try. There we go. So, this is Bronze Age for the Secret Underground Laboratory. I thank you for watching this video with this beautiful art glass lamp. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please, you know where to put them. I will be back with another video soon. And uh, until then, I thank you very much for watching.